You're listening to The Radcast, a top 25 worldwide business podcast. If it's radical, we cover it. Here's your host, Ryan Alford. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the latest edition of The Radcast. It's Friday, December 1st, 2023. Your first Radcast of December. Ho, 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 Chris Hansen. <laughs> oh, Merry Christmas. We made yeah, it. Impromptu. Uh, Santa Claus reference there. <laughs> very fitting with the Christmas tree in the background. I know. That's very nice. Uh, you're at the uh, Orlando abode. Not. Um, I am in. Yeah. No, me, I mean, not in the VK lounge today. I'm in the <laughs> Orlando, whatever. We'll call that the. Uh, You'll have what? to come down and come up with a nickname. I know. I need to get down to the Orlando house, the um, the you Disney, did. Disney fakeade, fakeade, not the, the magic happens, baby. <laughs> yes. How far are we from Disney from there? Like, how far? How long would it take you to get in line in Disney World? Uh, like 25, 30 minutes. I mean, thirty Depending minutes. Thirty minutes from fun, you know. Just all the fun yeah, you can from have. From the most magical place on earth. Yes, for Mickey. Hi, everybody. M-I-C-K-E-Y. Yes. It's your weekly marketing and business news of the week. And just anything else we want to talk about. How was Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving was lovely. Had a great, great family time, great food. How about you? Good. I um, no, over ate a few times. You know, the normal thing. Lots of uh, turkey and, you know, dressing. And then my dad made vegetable soup on Friday. It was a little mm. change of pace. It was pretty good. Yeah. Yep. So it was good. Just driving. Luckily, all our family is remotely in the uh, South Carolina area here. So all good. Really nice. Thankful for all of those things. No, um, no family fist fights. <laughs> Hey, that's, there's a high likelihood of some drama in any family event. I think that applies to any family. I, we were fortunate as well. No drama this year. <laughs> the triple F family. Everyone, fist everyone was a happy, it was all happy, happy drunks. No, no angry. Yes. Um, on a lighter note on our news of the week, this is the time of year when you see all of the uh, music replay lists. Spotify comes out with their list called Spotify wrapped. Apple is getting in the game with what they, and I use Apple music. Um, it's called replay and I've got some beef with, uh, with what's gone down here. I've always, I've always liked Spotify has seemed to always get my playlist, right? It's like, even if I feel like they've stretched it a bit, like into songs, I don't think I played that much. It's, it's stuff that I would listen to and sure. you know, they do it in a social way. It's fun. You can share it. So all those things, so Apple's in there. And let me just tell you, I listen to Apple more. We're kind of an Apple family. We've got all the subscriptions. And so we all listen to Apple Music. Let me tell you, you talk about stretching. There are so many songs on there that I have never listened to. <laughs> I'm like, it's the replay. And I'm like, who is this person? I'm like, I'm starting to question my own sanity. I'm like, I don't. Are they, is it even at least? A tr is it similar or catchy? Oh, like are they I mean, doing a good job? And it was, you, on this you know, new? Miley Cyrus was like the first song, and I'm like, and I got no oh, so no beef with Miley. I mean, I like her. I like some of her stuff. I like a little Wrecking Ball. Sure, it's catchy, but yeah, <laughs> I listened to Miley Cyrus song intentionally but, like all year. <laughs> I'm like, you're not searching out Miley Cyrus when you open iTunes. You're not like, you know what, boys? No. And I know she's had some hits this year, some rebound hits or whatever you want to call them. But like it started with that sure. and then it went to a couple other songs. And it was kind of like all it was was truly like the top 40s playlist of the year. And I'm like, and that's just not me. I mean, I listen to more country than anything. And it took like 12 songs right. to get to a country song. And I'm literally sitting like, did they get this wrong? Like, what is going on? Someone messed up on the algorithm. Yeah, the old algorithm like is wrong. So, and there was an article from TechCrunch, and you know, they were kind of bashing Apple's foray into this as well. So if you're listening out there, you you probably have experienced the Spotify wrapped. 
you probably have you done that, Chris? Have you seen that where you get like your top list, like you like the shareable thing via email? You'll start seeing yeah, you'll start seeing I, stories with everybody. Like every other story you see, if like your friends are like big music junkies, like will be like they're wrapped. Yeah. Like summation yeah. or whatever. And I've got a little yeah. trivia for you today, Chris. And for those out there, if you're listening, you can play along. The most streamed artist of 2023 on Spotify. I'm going to give you a, just so we don't have too much dead air, I, I'll give you three seconds. What's let's keep it. Most streamed artist. What's your guess, Chris? T-Swift. Oh, you're a T-Swift. ding, 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 ding. Yes. <laughs> it's got to be. I mean, we talk about her every other week. I figure <laughs> she's got to be. <laughs> it's the Taylor Swift show and the Taylor Swift world. We just live in it, right? Right. Right. <laughs> oh, right. you Swifties out there, just downloading your hearts out. I listen. I look, Taylor Swift would probably have been in my playlist this year, at least on some level, because I did like her new album and I did, there was a couple jams on there. I like some T Swift, right. a couple of her songs. I don't really love all the Swifties. Well, I kind of want to punch the Swifties in the face. Not if they're girls, just that they're guys. Sure. Um, <laughs> but unless you uh, lived in a box, you knew Taylor Swift had a massive tour this year. Yeah. But I, I, I like, like Taylor Swift. I just don't like her fans. You, Is that possible? Ian, is that okay? Is it yeah, okay to like I, like her I, but not like I, her? <laughs> I kind of I kind of agree with you. Yeah. Uh, so if you're a fan, like a, a I don't mean like a, like I'm a fan. I listen to her. I'm I, more of like a respect. You know, like good artist, right? Her own stuff. A lot of respect for the hustle. And she's like one of the most popular people on the planet. Total respect. Right. Fan. You know, like crazy hood. It just you know kind of gets to me, but. I, I would honestly say that applies to any super famous person and their fan base. <laughs> Probably. Not just Swifties. It, when you start passing out and sobbing, crying, it's a little. <laughs> a little yeah. <laughs> like, I got two and three from her. Oh, like overwhelmed. <laughs> I mean, right. I've, I've yeah. talked to a lot of famous people and I don't know. I'm, I just don't have that gene where I'm like, I, I really don't give a shit. Like I'm, I'm excited to talk to you like there's some of my heroes behind me on the board that i've had on the show and like sure you know but it's like uh you're just a human <laughs> we, <laughs> like we all bleed the same blood exactly you know? um you know but you have a couple respect, more zeros in your you bank say. account but that just doesn't really mean much to me <laughs> you know as far no. as uh no. me falling down over you but to each their own and you know who you are. You're listening out there. There's there's people either getting offended by this that are listening or that are going, oh, God, yeah, I know what you're saying, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. 100%. I had something tells me it's more of uh, the latter. Uh, and, and some other lighter news, I thought this was funny. You know, I'm a big college football guy. Went to Clemson and go Clemson Tigers. Beat our rival, South Carolina. Ugliest game ever. God, it was so boring. <laughs> <laughs> but we won. Uh, that's all that matters. That's how you really feel. <laughs> it was. I was there telling my dad. My dad came over for the game, and I'm like, no one in America is is watching this game unless you are a South Carolina or a Clemson fan because you're watching it for like three minutes going, this is the worst offense display. It was offensive. <laughs> that's how bad the offense <laughs> was of both by both teams. And it, the only thing that saved us was Clemson's defense was just better. And so uh, – Anyway, go Tigers. But related to that, a little more fun news for those of you out there. Pop-Tarts is going to have their own bowl game this year. And um, they're coming out with an edible mascot for their inaugural bowl game. So, you know, that mascot walks by. You need to take a bite of that thing. Pop-Tarts is introducing an edible mascot for the first time ever. Pop-Tarts Bowl. A postseason college football game set for December 28th in Orlando. You can go over there and take a bite, Chris. <laughs> the unique mascot will engage with the crowd during the game. After the final whistle, transform into a snack for the winning team. <laughs> Is he going to have a wrapper on that he pulls off? He's been walking around all day, sweating his That's ass hilarious. off, and you're going to take a bite out of his Pop-Tart. Ugh. <laughs> this initiative is part of the brand's efforts to connect with the college football audience and aligns with its new creative direction introduced in July. Uh, yeah. All right. So you could eat that guy. <laughs> uh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. It's a good brand play. I think 
sounds a little gross at first, but I'm willing to play it out. And um, just because yeah. I like college football, I'll probably I will say this: it makes me want to tune into this game. If long as we get to see that, yeah, is that mascot get eaten? You know, it should be at like halftime or something. So, something. are they hosting like a whole new bowl game specifically? Yeah, they're usually they're taking over a sponsor's taking over an existing one. They don't add too many new ones. It's usually like one that had a sponsor's net, like the Cheez Its Bowl or something. If I had to guess, if you don't see a sure. Cheez Its Bowl this yeah. year, it's probably this bowl that took over the name sponsorship. Yeah. And this is a popular marketing play for some of the medium to larger brands because, and let me tell you, it's not because the game's going to be very good. Because let's be honest, this is going to be like Rutgers versus like Central Florida. Sorry right. if you're a Rutgers or Central Florida fan, yeah. but uh, my alumni, my alma mater, but no offense taken. Yes, <laughs> it's all about the TV dollars and the TV exposure. Because think about how much Pop Tarts or any of these brands spend on a 30 second commercial, right? Tens of hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on the network, depending on the time. You know, Super Bowl adds five million dollars. So, like. Even like a news time, 30 second spots, you know, a hundred grand sometimes more than that. If it's a network TV. So they do these bowl sponsorships because they can have, like, we're talking about it right now. We're validating it from a marketing perspective. The ESPNs, the world, all the sports networks that pop tarts will get mentioned. I mean, I don't know how many million times because of the name sponsorship. And then the game is on TV for three hours with the Pop-Tarts Bowl on the screen for three hours. So, again, back to the comparison of what you pay for a 30-second commercial on television, much less a three-hour, you know, bowl game that has your name plastered everywhere. So that's why they do this. Big-time reaching frequency and usually – a pretty in tune audience because of the popularity of bowl games in general, especially on the TV. I mean, how many people go, you'll go and you'll be like, there's only like a hundred people there. <laughs> it's because it's all TV now. You know, they might as well play mm-hmm. in an empty stadium for some of these, but then you wouldn't be able to eat the pop tart. <laughs> so uh, there's another reason to actually go to the game. You might get to take a bite out of that pop tart. I hope they're handing them out. Would you would you take a would you take a bite of that guy if he walked by? Like if he walked by and he like ripped that wrapper off, would you take a bite? It's a hard pass for me. (laughs) I could not. (laughs) (laughs) Not gonna lie. Even if it's brown sugar and cinnamon. (laughs) I'd have a hard time not taking a bite. Maybe break break maybe break off maybe break off a piece, but I wouldn't like (laughs) put my face. Yeah, you you'd be like breaking off the corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like rip a little piece off the corner of the bread. I don't need the whole. Just, yeah, just for the experience, for the photo op. But uh, in other lighter news, one of my icon favorites, Dolly Parton. Did you see this? Dolly Parton dazzles. I I did in Dallas Cowboys cheer, cheerleader uniform at the Thanksgiving halftime show. This comes to us from our friends at Billboard. Billboard dot com. Dolly Parton surprised the crowd of the at the NFL halftime show during the Dallas Cowboys Washington Commanders game on Thanksgiving, wearing a sparkling Cowboys inspired cheerleaders outfit. The 77 year old country superstar performed a high energy medley of hits from her new album and Queen songs. I tell you what, 77 man, rock that cheerleader. I mean. Uh, I'd stop short of saying like I was all oh, she was attracted, but good God. I mean, 77 and being just able to even rock that thing. Pretty incredible. She looked great. I, I was seeing a lot of people getting triggered by it. You know, like, <laughs> oh, you're too old. Like, dude, this lady's an g- actual good person who's had a very long, successful career. Give her a break. If you can still you're go just- rock a stage at 77. Yeah. Hats off to you. I would, if Cowboy I were, hat. I mean, I, she, she, she was flipping them the, uh, the silent little finger. <laughs> like she gives a shit. Like, I mean, yeah. But, she, yeah dude. And, but the reality that is story is amazing. Yeah. And still rocking it. Anybody hating on that is just wishes that 77, that they could do, do the halftime show 
for Thanksgiving game and be rocking some outfit that they actually can pull off, you know? So yeah. Yeah. Hats off to uh, old Dolly. Instagram old day. is testing a feature for users to filter spam followers. Hmm. Instagram is testing a new feature to filter out spam followers, which should be available to all users soon. <laughs> Always love these articles. They're so specific. Soon. It's available soon. Right, right. This feature will identify potential spam accounts and require your approval before they can follow you, helping to clean up your follower list and improve engagement. The effectiveness of the spam detection remains uncertain, probably because they haven't launched it yet. But it aims to address issues like cluttered follower lists, reduced engagement, and damage to your account's credibility caused by fake followers. So there you go. I um, I'm all I'm all for getting rid of some spam accounts, you know, because nobody clutters yeah, up my uh, comment section more than these fuckers that are just going. You know, when I'm in a time of need, I like to go for. Molly dot Ringwald, you know, or whatever, <laughs> like, add, you know, they're yeah. trying to promote these, you know, other accounts. This person helped me so much with my financial <laughs> help. Yeah. Go follow. It's like, okay, sounds legit. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I was really down in the dumps. I was contemplating things that I never thought were possible. But then Rick dot Hassel came along <laughs> and saved my day. I'm like, Come on, man. Get out of my feet. It's, yeah. You know. uh, no. Yeah. I know. I guess the easiest solution is this is like set it to private and you can kind of filter who follows you. But yeah, maybe. But I'm right there with you. We'll see how effective it is once they launch it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all for it. We'll see. Surely there's going to be people already working, trying to work around it. You know, you better believe that. Yep. And if you want to learn from me directly, Join my newsletter, ryanoffer.com backslash newsletter. Sign up. I give daily advice on marketing, personal branding, podcasting, life. Give that a shout. Join that. It's free. It's daily. Just like this show, give away our best advice. So this comes to us from usatoday.com. CableTV.com is hiring a chief of cheer. (laughs) Yeah. All right. And you know what? They're going to pay you $2,500 to watch 25 holiday movies in 25 days. That doesn't sound very hard. One holiday movie a day for 25 it's, days. I, I, I know. I read that and I was like, seems kind of like easy. Yeah. So the What's chief of cheer is offering $2,500 and one year streaming service memberships. Applicants must be 18 or older and submit their info by December 1st. That's today, people. Get them in. The job includes rating movies and streaming services. <laughs> oh, they're only going to hire one. I thought this was like a contest for multiple. <laughs> a single one? That's what I thought. Anyone could do it. Oh, give me a break. Okay. This is more like a contest. It's called a contest. And, you know, more than you're hiring someone. That's a bullshit. So this one chief of cheer gets $100 a day for 25 days. So they're going to only hire one. That's unfortunate. I was hoping I was going to apply for that shit, Chris. You know, I'll do one one movie a day. How do they pick the winner? You no. Know? They say that you apply with a reason why you're the best fit. As I read the small print here, I was getting excited. I thought it was going to be like multiple chiefs of cheer. There's only one. It could be the chieftains <laughs> of cheer or something. You know, the chiefs of cheer. I think we should apply as a At team. Least. We need a duel. We'll split the I money. I was going to say, <laughs> putting it all on one person is just, I mean, what if they fail? What if they don't watch 25 movies? I know. Days? I might need a uh, a junior chief of tier to assist. You know, Cameron, I need you on board with this. I need a junior chief of say. tier to assist with my uh, movie watching. In case, I, in case I'm not off, you know, I might get bored or something. And I need to be able, they're probably going to have like a quiz. Like what? Of what happened yeah. during the movie to make sure that you actually did the job, you know? Split that 2500 with her. I mean, how much PTO you know, do I get boss. with this chief of cheer? I need some time off, baby. You know, 25 days in a row of work, all work and no play. An hour a day? What? <laughs> 
this is more than most people work. You know, not most. I say some people, not most. <laughs> Fortunately, yeah. yeah. You know, like, oh God, I have to watch a movie every day. And if you're watching a, I mean, there's people doing this not getting paid this time of year. So <laughs> yeah, it's might right. well put your hat in the game. They might as well throw it unless in. Unless they're unless they're really bad Christmas movies. Maybe it's like all like, yeah, I mean, like the worst. Like these movies that you don't even want to watch, like the worst, like you know the. The, like the Bobo, like uh, Scrooge movie or something from like, like yes. it doesn't have the named actors. It's like D list actors in everything. Yeah, sure kind of like not. the Hallmark Channel. <laughs> Hallmark, the, the Hallmark Channel. <laughs> oh God, I I definitely would. I would be the. I need the chief of beer. If I was going to be the chief of cheer to do that. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have to combine yeah. some so jobs get here. You through that. Yeah, we need we need we need Budweiser to be a sponsor to step in, you know, like if, if you're going to watch all this shit. But anyway, yeah, hundred percent. We did have some winners and losers of Black Friday last year. I mean, did you do any shopping? Did you, did you go Black Friday shopping? I ordered some stuff online. That doesn't took count. Advantage of some if sales. you didn't get in a line, and you know, have someone yell at you for like jumping the line or something, does that even exist anymore? Yeah, no. I drove down to the boat. I mean, on Friday, and the line there was no one. I, there's no no traffic. Really? Yeah, I didn't see any traffic. I I think, I think people are, you know, you can get it all online now. You know, unless you're one of those people that like likes that experience. I think. Yeah. Camping out, whatever. What getting a, a root canal? <laughs> I love that experience. Oh, <laughs> I think I'd yeah, rather exactly. do that than. Uh, be in line at 4 a.m. at Best Buy. Right. It said uh, Black Friday 2023 saw record online spending. <laughs> no kidding. $9.8 wow. billion with mobile shopping expected to surpass desktop for the first time. That's hard to believe. I would have thought that already happened. However, analysts like TD Cohen lowered holiday season forecast due to consumer caution from inflation. Retailers started promoting deals early, and mobile shopping reached an all-time high. Despite the increased online sales, they revised the spend forecast to a 2.2 to 3% increase. The article also mentions the rise of mobile shopping, the impact of inflation on fulfillment options, and expectations for Cyber Week spending. Super Saturday, with an extra shopping day, is anticipated to be significant for retailers. It just goes and talks about the decline of early morning doorbuster deals in recent Black Friday. I didn't see any doorbuster deals, actually. Moving on, fake out-of-home home ads are becoming a hurdle for the out-of-home history, out-of-home industry. Fake billboards are gaining popularity as a social media attention-grabbing strategy. The experts warn of brand trust risk associated with this trend. Brands are posting out-of-home ads on platforms like Instagram and TikTok, but some of these billboards don't actually exist in the physical world. So you're posting a picture of an outdoor board, I guess, that doesn't exist. I may have done that before. I don't know. (laughs) I mean, I know we've done that for vacay. We did a picture of a billboard like, your mom wants gummies for Mother's Day. Yeah. I mean... Is it really, people really think that that's a board or that is it really reducing trust? Yeah. I don't know. That might be an overstatement. I don't think anybody at all thought like, oh, where's that billboard? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, I miss passing it by, you know, like. Right. I think they got to get the ploy. And I thought this was more like brands were actually like playing around with like spoofs on outdoor boards, like spoofing something. Yeah. I have seen that. Yeah. And that's kind of more the funny thing is like if someone is spoofing someone or making fun of them, it used to be, they used to do this and I think they cracked down on it. Like when Clemson and South Carolina would play each other, they would actually put up billboards in each other's towns, like talk shit. It's like, (laughs) they won't let them do that anymore. (laughs) Like it'd be like, 
you know, something derogatory about their coach, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. <laughs> so, uh, but I think psychological game. psychological warfare on the, on the, on, in the media playing up on, yeah. uh, college football, the, uh, Walmart's shoppable rom-com bridges holiday content commerce. Walmart is launching a shoppable holiday content series titled Add to Heart. <laughs> Get it? Add to Heart. Add to Cart. Inspired by yeah. romantic comedies. The 23-part series running on TikTok, Roku, YouTube, and Walmart social channels follows the story of Jessica, a New York designer, and Javi, an old flame. The unique aspect is that viewers can purchase items seen on screen, including furniture and outfits with orders fulfilled by Walmart. The series aims to bridge content and commerce, leveraging TikTok's shoppable video format and Roku's OK to Text feature. Campaign, part of Walmart's efforts to adapt to the digital area, tar targets a broad audience while particularly appealing to Gen Z and millennials, of course. Add to Heart episodes will start airing on December 2nd. That's tomorrow with a live premiere that happened this week featuring real life couples who met at Walmart stores. Oh, how sweet. You know, oh, what a love story. Yeah, there's some Walmarts here that'd be an interesting place to pick up people, but uh, I digress. You, <laughs> it gets, it gets, I a just little... thought of that Walmart you and I were in in, in Greenville together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Didn't see any potential girlfriends there, but you know, there, it was it was brimming with uh, potential. <laughs> the uh, you know, you know, only if they had a dentist. The um, built in. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, it's uh, I kind of like this play, actually. If it's successful, it's all about how how good the uh, entertainment is, but. I right. do think you're going to see more and more of this branded type content where you can buy stuff within the entertainment that's happening. That's not a direct sale. And so if it's done right, this can be very, very lucrative. Um, it's just, this reminds me of video games. Where yeah. It's like buying upgrades while live playing kind of. Yeah. I think it's smart. Yeah. Let's and see what the content's like. That's what I mean. Content's got to carry it though, so it's it, it makes does. like in theory, it's brilliant and it makes a lot of sense. But it's like it's the content still has to be good enough because you're gonna are you gonna watch it, and if you're watching it, yeah, to have the products and the influential things built in, you can direct. By, I totally get it, but I hope that content's good because if not, then you just got shitty content that nobody watches with a bunch of features that no one uses. So, right. If you're thinking about doing something like this, focus on the content and not the shopping engine. Like the, the technology is there, but you got to make the content good. Sometimes people get caught up. Yeah. I know this firsthand working with big brands. They get really caught up in the technology of the solution and like, mm -hmm. oh, wow, this whiz bang, it can do these things. That it's all the sizzle, but they forget about the steak. And it's like, but yeah. the experience, like, but the experience sucked. Like, oh, we had all these features and all this stuff. It, it could have been so cool, but you have to make the experience good. You know, like, it, it doesn't you matter. The cool factor. You know, like the Xbox. The Xbox is cool as shit, but the game better be good or people don't play it. Yep. <laughs> yep. You know, I remember they'd have all this stuff. You'd watch all these things, games coming out, and it'd be so, like, exciting. And the game sucked. And it's like, all lost mm. because the game wasn't any fun. And so, yeah. don't forget about the steak while you're cooking the sizzle. So, we'll see where shopping goes for Walmart. But I will say this. This intersection of content, shopping, and non-salesy ways with which to interject product within content is going to be expanding because consumers are very aware, more aware than they've ever been, that they're being marketed to. And yeah, so 
direct hit you over the head ads are becoming less and less effective. And so these more natural organic engagements where product is intertwined and then easily shoppable is kind of the new play. Look, you've had product placement for 50 years. I mean, that's what soap operas were. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at the box of soap on the, on the counter. You know, that's where all this started. That's where content started. Like that's where TV and entertainment started was the soap opera, which is moms that stayed at home. They're watching TV and they see the brand that the, that the actor is using. But so that's not new. What's new is the ability to hit one button and it show up on your doorstep the next yeah. day. Mm. So, yep. but that content better be good. Just like the sup up. I mean, look, days in our lives, they won a lot of Emmys <laughs> or yeah, something. They, bro, they've been in the game a long uh, time, really? bro. With that track record, you're doing something right. Oh my God. Where, where the storyline moves at like a snail's pace. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm, you could watch it and like not watch it three <laughs> weeks later. And like, she's still like hanging over the cliff, almost dying. God, she hasn't moved yet. <laughs> anyway, you get the point. Keep them on those cliffhangers. Yes. Finally today, we'd be remiss without talking about the way we stay looking good. And that for me mm -hmm. is called air lab. It's the only way this glow happens, Chris, this holiday glow I got to stay and flow with my holiday glow with Caldera Lab, like my favorite. It. I'm holding it in my hand. You know, I'm trying to be an icon, but I got to, until I am, I'm just using the icon to keep these, uh, the bags under these eyes. I got four kids, Chris. I'm, I'm running companies. I got four kids I'm chasing around. And I'm sleeps in, in low sports. supply. <laughs> so I got to keep yeah. Caldera Lab at high supply. Premium. Men's care delivered right to your house, delivered straight to you. And look, you can't buy this stuff in store. It's, it's, you got to buy it direct and you use Rad Ryan, you get 20% off. And I'm telling you, I, I've said this before, I make a big deal out of it, but literally, I was using it this morning, the suds were overflowing, Chris. It was like, you know, it's like you shake, it's yeah, like shaking up a champagne bottle and just an explosion of like stuff. Like mm. it's, that's how it is. The champagne of soap is Caldera Lab, the body bar. I'm telling you, go to calderalab.com, use Rad Ryan, you'll get 20% off. You'll thank me for it. And look, it's gift giving time. The man in your life does not need ties and socks, he needs skincare. No. He needs to look good. And Caldera Lab will do it. We appreciate them as the official skincare partner of the Radcast and Ryan Alford and anyone that's smart enough to get it. Ah, oh, Chris, any final words, my friend, here in Orlando? No final words. Just everyone stays warm out there and has a great holiday. Yes. Happy holidays to everyone. December 1st, that means you have about three weeks, three weeks of shopping. So you should be nervous. Get it going. That's how my mom I only have three weeks left. I'm know. nervous. <laughs> oh, I'm not nervous. I like to buy stuff on Christmas Eve. I'm just, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's at least I, the day before I Christmas am, Eve. I'm that guy typically. <laughs> yeah. We appreciate everyone. You're I like fine. to come through in the clutch. <laughs> yeah, come through in the clutch. Hey, like you can't have a little pressure. It's not fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Make it a game. I want a challenge. Yeah. Find us at the radcast.com for Chris Hansen in Orlando. I'm Ryan Alford from G Vegas. We'll see you next time on the Radcast. To listen or watch full episodes, visit us on the web at the radcast.com or follow us on social media at our Instagram account, the.rad.cast or at Ryan Alford. Stay radical. <laughs>